All right, hey guys, and welcome back to uh, this physics video. I have not made some in quite a while, but I've had some user requests that are saying, Mr. Cole, it's time to get back in action. So uh, we're going to start a little series here on Newton's Law. So this video is applications of Newton's second law. In particular, how do you solve problems where all your forces end up equal to zero? So typically we look at a problem and we usually look at Newton's laws and we say, okay, the sum of all forces is equal to MA. Cool, but there's something known as the first condition of static equilibrium, in which case the sum of all the forces on an object, that means the forces in the X direction all equal zero, the sum of all forces in the Y direction also all equal zero. If your teacher's not using this symbol, your teacher may be writing like force net in the x direction, but man, that's a lot to write. So usually the first example, what anybody works with this, is like this classic stoplight problem. And so what you have in the stoplight problem is essentially this. You've got acting on some point in the wire, you've got a mg down, uh, some teachers will write FG here. That's completely cool if you do that. Some teachers will write a W here. Some teachers may or may not put a little arrow for vector above it. I'm cool with either of those. I usually go straight to MG because that's the formula. Now if we look at this, we've got a couple of tensions. We've got a horizontal tension and you could call it T1 or T2. It simply does not matter. Uh, I could call it T infinity. It still does not matter. And then you see another tension on the other side, and you've got a small angle involved. So this is the typical question. I've seen this same question before with like a cat burglar hanging on a wire. I've seen all variations. It's the same problem, though. So without anything else, let's, let's go solve that one. Now, I'll go and give you a heads up. This is the, if you see this, this is the easiest. And if you're wondering why is this one the easiest. So if like if your teacher gave you this one or the AP exam gave you this one, they're throwing you a bone. If you ever work one where you have a horizontal, so you have one of these that is horizontal. Guys, that one's going to be a very easy one to work. So let's do something in this one. Let's just say that that stoplight has a weight of 100 newtons. So the force of gravity on that object is 100 newtons, the mg. First, let's do this. Let's start with a free body diagram because like if you're in my class, I'd tell you, hey, if you don't have a free body diagram, I'm not even going to help you. So we sit here and take this. Now let's get us this red color back. So I think in my picture, I drew a T2 to the right and then we had a T1 up and to the left. I got this really crazy idea. What if we put it at a 30 degree angle to make our calculation simple? And then I'm going to put hereby officially an mg down, a weight of 100 newtons, a force of gravity or whatever it is you want to call it of 100 newtons down. This is first. That's your free body diagram. Don't raise your hand in my class if you haven't done that. Now here's what we're going to do next. A sum of the forces, both X and a sum of the forces Y. And so now what we'll do is this. I'm usually going to say to the right is my positive. Now if we start working problems where objects are moving, if they're moving, I'm usually going to make the direction of the motion my positive direction. So keep that in mind. Uh, I'm also going to try and work problems so that I'm never moving in both X and Y directions. Anyway, so let's look at our forces in the X direction. So if we take a look at this one, hopefully my mouse is showing up in the video. We've got a T2 pointing dead to the right. So I'm going to have T2 and now subtract any forces going back to the left. And so back to the left, I've got a T1 at a 30 degree angle. Now the only part of that T1 I'm interested in, and if you have troubles with this, I've got other videos where we go through and just do like trig. 
but all I'm interested in is the component of that T1 that's in the X direction. And so I'm going to use the cosine function in order to uh, solve that. So we're going to say T1, ooh, I'm writing in the wrong place, minus, <laughs> forgive me, T1 cosine of 30, and that's equal to, and that's what makes this a, uh, this object is magic word, it is static. So it's not going anywhere, so we're going to say it's, if we had constant velocity, we could still apply this same speaking. It may no longer be static, but even at a constant velocity, all our forces would still be equal to zero. Now do this. Sum of the forces y, is there anything pointing up? And again, usually I'm going to make up my positive. Uh, now again, here's the thing, guys. All this positive stuff is arbitrary. As long as you pick a coordinate system and go with it, you're cool. But typical convention, up is positive. But if something is falling, I'm usually going to make the direction it's falling or moving my positive direction. So keep that in mind as you go through all these videos. So we've got a T1, and we want the vertical component of T1. Make sure I get my 1 in there. Sine 30. And that's the only thing going up. So now subtract anything below the horizontal. Well, that would just be an mg and it's 100. So I'm going to go ahead and write minus 100. And guys, that's why this one is so easy. Because now here's what you've got. You've got two unknowns, t1 and t2. You've got two equations. We can go ahead and take this equation and solve for t1. t1 sine of 30. Move the 100 to the other side. So add 100 to both sides. I'm going to drop my unit now because it's going to kind of get in my way. The sine of 30 is 1 half. So that's 1 half T1 equals 100. And now I can also say, wait a minute, divide both sides by 0.5. And so T1 must be equal to 200 newtons. And there we've got our T1. So now what if we want to find T2? We'll just go back to this x equation and substitute. So I know that T2 minus T1 cosine of 30 is equal to 0. So all I have to do at this point is plug back in that 200. So this would be T2 minus 200. We could go ahead and move it to the other side if we wanted. Again, I'm intentionally leaving my units out so they don't muddy this up. So 200 cosine of 30, which is 0.8667, but we'll use the Casio calculator. 200 cosine of 30, and we'll get a digit answer for that, is usually 173. So T2 minus 173 equals 0, or we could say that T2 is equal to 173 newtons. And there is our solution on that one. Now, I think that's quite enough for this video. If you want to, in the next video, there will be a part two. Part two. In part two, what we're going to do is the one that's a little bit harder. Now, if they're equal angles, those are really e easy problems. But in the part two of this video, we'll go ahead and do one where you've got uh, two angles on each side, and it's a little bit more difficult. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that other weird stuff that people shout on YouTube. Deuces, guys.